Hello and welcome to Apparent Faith. This is a companion to my book, Apparent Faith, What Fatherhood Taught Me About the Father's Heart. I'll admit that I'm not a professional videographer. You may be able to tell that pretty soon, but I hope that, like my book, that you resonate with the story, that it's not about the video production or anything like that. But this is my story. This is not to convince you of anything. Uh, it's just to invite you along on the journey. My journey started a few years ago when I asked the question, uh, what if I'm wrong? Uh, I was a bivocational pastor. I had been that for about 17, 18 years at the time. I had a job, I had a full-time job, and, but I also worked as a pastor and helped replanting churches um, and things like that. But I began to ask the question, maybe I'm wrong about some things. Maybe the things that I've invested my life in, I'm not so sure about. I wasn't in a crisis. I wasn't in a, in a midlife crisis, even though I was about 52 or so. Uh, but not in a crisis, just a gradual thing that began to happen. And I began to lose faith in what I invested my life in. That this thing that I was doing was eroding away a little bit, and I wanted to find out why. Uh, faith is assurance, after all, right? That's what it says. Faith is assurance. But as a bivocational pastor, I had that comfort in knowing what I believed. That comfort was my certainty. Some people call it certainty. Um, but that certainty in some areas was causing uncertainty in other areas. And either I had to ignore this uncertainty, this unrest, this, this disjointedness, or, or I had to address it. Now, instead of ignoring it, instead of uh, being an apologist and trying to, trying to skirt around it, or um, just ignoring it, I, I decided to address it. And so I began to ask questions, um, and, and it led to certain things in my life. Uh, at the same time, I'd had some health issues, and we, we had decided to become plant-based, um, not necessarily vegan, but plant-based. And people responded really uh, differently than we expected. As our health began to improve, it and we talked about it, some people be kind of came uncomfortable with that. And make it worse, not only did we become the health food nuts, but we also uh, experimented with some yoga and meditation, and that, of course, was, was dangerous and a slippery slope or something. And so it, it, it just intimidated people a little bit, I think, and their responses to that kind of shocked us. Their, their responses um, made us wonder uh, why aren't people happy for us that our health is improving, we're doing better? Um, and I know those were surface issues, but I, it, I knew if there were surface issues, then there were deeper issues um, that we needed to look at. One day, I, as we were walking down the street, I said to Laura, you know what, I can't do this anymore. Uh, I can't dance around the issues. Um, I can't pretend. I can't... Um, uh, act like I'm certain when I'm not, and and I need to go deeper. I need to discover the beliefs that I really believe in. I need to go deeper into my faith. Uh, I need to not only look at the happy, the light, the good side. I need to look at the dark side of my faith. And maybe I'm wrong. And maybe I'm wrong became more less of a question and maybe more of a conviction. I I think I am wrong about some things. Uh, at least I, I'm no longer the apologist. I don't want to be a fraud. I want to be authentic. And so I resigned from the church that I was replanting. It had been successful and it was doing well. Um, but I decided to resign and take a look at my faith. At the same time, I connected with a guy that I had known about 15 years ago. We had gone through the Heart Connection Ministries Breakthrough Seminar. And my friend, Dr. Paul Fitzgerald, had been a person that kind of came in and out of my life at the right times. Uh, and he came into my life, back into my life at this time, and we began to talk. He had some books that he recommended, and I don't remember if he recommended all of these books, but I remember kind of the top four that I read initially. Uh, one of them was a book called Centers in the Hands of a Loving God. 
and that's by Brian Zong. And that got me to look at the um, a different view maybe of God and kind of look through a different lens. Another book that helped with that was A More Christ-Like God by Brad Jerzak. And those two books together by those two friends, oddly enough, <laughs> helped me a lot. Uh, I also read The Bible Tells Me So by Peter Enns and Falling Upward by Richard Rohr. Uh, Falling Upward was, was really recommended directly by Brian and Perry Zond, who we got to meet uh, just a little bit later in this journey. And we started attending their church, Word of Life Church, in St. Joseph, Missouri, and were there for a couple of years. Uh, that was a very, very important part of our journey, uh, to spend some time with them and to hear from them uh, and get, gain some guidance from them. Like most of my mentors, <laughs> they probably felt that I didn't listen enough, uh, but uh, I guarantee you we, we got some good guidance from them and some wisdom from them. Later on, Dr. Paul... Uh, and Susanna, when we had breakfast with them, uh, mentioned Paul Young. And we we just kind of had heard of Paul Young briefly, but they recommended we watch the movie The Shack. Um, Paul Young was speaking in person later that month, I believe. And we got to see him in person. We, we watched The Shack. We read the book. I read the book eventually. And then later read his book, Lies We Believe About God. And the book, Lies We Believe About God, uh, caused me to to struggle a little bit. I would open the book, I would close it. I, I don't think I threw it across the room, but I, I struggled with it a little bit. I read it and I closed it and I read it and I closed it and rinse and repeat until I got all the way through the book a couple of times. But it caused me to consider. And one of the things that it caused me to consider, and I wrote this down in my book, one of the things that caused me to consider is this. Some of my beliefs are led to a natural conclusion that I am better than God. As a parent, I do things a certain way, and I'm, not, I'm definitely not perfect. But my belief system also says that God does things a certain way. And my belief system is in question because it leads to a conclusion uh, that God is worse than me, that God is worse than me. So maybe I'm wrong about hell because it, if, if I can watch the shack, the movie, and, and watch the scene in the middle of the movie and come to the conclusion that I could, could not eternally punish any of my children for what they've done, but, but my belief system says God can. Uh, and those two things can't coexist. God can't be worse than me. God can't have a worse temper than me. Uh, God can't be so full of grace and mercy and love and also full of so much vengeful anger at the same time. Uh, how could a loving God be a worse father than me? And that, that became the framework for my book. As I began to investigate uh, and look and, and remember uh, how I had raised my children and the experiences I had gone through with them, I began to apply that to my belief system and to say, um, how does that line up? If God is sometimes referenced as a father, and I understand there's different frameworks and ways to view God, but if, but if God is sometimes viewed, viewed as a father, and I'm a father, and I, I know my experiences, then then that's at least worth a look. And, it's a, and, and it gave me a lens through which to look to reevaluate my beliefs. And I, in most cases, it was very, very helpful. Um, in the book, in this course, there is, you'll notice, a lack of Scripture. Um, that's not because Scripture is not important to me. Scripture is very important to me. It's the, it's the soil out of which our faith grows. Very important to me. And one of the chapters in the book explains my thoughts about that. But I didn't want scripture to be a weapon in this book. Um, these are stories. These, this is a journal of my journey. And so this journal of my journey uh, is sacred to me, and I want to share that with you. I want to share those stories with you. Most of the people that have read the book so far have been kind of touched by it. It's a heart thing. It's a, it's a journal. It's a journey. It's a sharing of experiences. 
So uh, in, in looking at a journey, in looking at faith, uh, I think we always have to look at not just the light, but the darkness. We're, we're afraid of that as Christians sometimes to look at the darkness. But I think when you look at the light and the dark sides of faith, because sometimes your faith journey takes you down that dark path. And we want to look at that. We want to examine it. We want to look at it with compassion. But I say in the introduction, let us walk together. Let's go together on this journey. I just invite you to travel with me for a little while. And I think in the end, what you're going to find is what I found in the closing chapter of my book is that I wrote a chapter on peace. Uh, I am beginning to find peace, and I pray that for you also. I pray that you'll find some peace, and I pray that you'll find a God that is really more like Jesus.